All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to go back. To. Maybe not. All right, so my name is Yomara Idet Garcia Ramos, but everybody usually calls me Yomi again. I hope you can see me. I'm not really sure. Um, I started off in PE, taught their elementary, middle school, and high school for 15 years, got to science in the high school, and uh, continued there with science tax. Uh, I did the retesters, started off with the biology core team, um, was a science coach for uh, the redesign project, moved to uh, middle school for instructional coach for the TIPS grant, and uh, then went to LBJ uh, for nine years, and then decided that I wanted to try something different. And so now I am the science, uh, the middle school science curriculum specialist. So, I kind of went over the objectives with you in the beginning so that you could kind of, I, I had you ask three questions about uh, it. Um, you know, look at the words and phrases if you were, you, you didn't really know about and what you were really excited. But basically, I'm going to try to get through this really quick and I am always here to help you. So we're going to start off with the first one, which was about the star 2.0 item types. So I'm going to show you a couple of drag and drops, click and, uh, click and pulls, hotspots, and chat waterfall. Now, these are done so that you can get your kids ready and prepared. Now, so you will see that some of them are actually on the star test and some of them aren't, but they are things that help your kids manipulate. I taught middle school, I taught high school, but it, it, even adults, we have problems. And so when you use these to engage your kids in the classroom, you also help them be, mm, what's the word I'm looking for? You help them be more efficient and using the little mouse pad that we have. So this is a star type item. It's a drag and drop. And so I'm going to have to get out of um, slideshow so that I can show you. And these are easy. But just the thing about being able to drag and drop the answers to where they belong, that's not even the right one, but just so you can understand that these do help your kids. Uh, one of the things that teachers have problems is how do I make it to where they don't, and that's going to come next, right? But I just wanted to show you some of the things that we can do with these Google Slides. Do they need to be graded? No. Is it good for them to practice? Yes. So you have different ways of doing it. I know that math teachers use it a lot. I know that um, history and reading use the drag and drop. It it helps them, and it's also, like I said, a 2.0 test. Now, hotspots has been one of the hardest things for us to figure out how to do. So one of the ways we've been doing it is um, you have a, a question, and then it asks you to find the number line. I'm not really sure, so I'm hoping that one of my math teachers can say, but I think 10 was the answer. And you click on it and you can change the color. Oops, sorry. You can change the color. Tell them that they have to change the color to find the answer. But just the fact of them practicing, of clicking on something, changing the color, all of this helps them so that they can be better at taking the test. Here's an actual thing that they had given us for, um, sorry, that they had given us for one of our practice tests in science. And so they had to see what two cities that were going to have clear skies. And so the kids can learn how to click on two things. You know, all this ends up helping. And I know that third, fourth, and fifth grade have drag and drops as well and hotspots. The more you practice, the more successful your kids will be. They won't make mistakes as when they're going from, you know, answering the question, going to click to the next, like right there. I was sliding up and I clicked to the next slide. 
And sometimes our kids are click are sliding up to click next and they uh, they end up clicking on like, let's say they chose answer D. And they're going to click next and they end up clicking right next to A and A it changes from D to A. So the more they practice, the better they will get. This next one is called a click and pull, not a star item, but something that they can use to help. And so what it is, let me show you with one that I can manipulate. It's just arrows. And I, you know, you have to show them, get the dot on the end, click on it and pull. Click on it, grab the end, and pull. And it's in the practice and them getting more comfortable. And like I said, elementary needs to start helping middle school out, but even our high school kids, I, I've seen them have difficulties on doing that. Now, how could I do all that stuff and not have them move around? Well, what we use is, especially in curriculum, uh, we use something called master slides. And the way it, it, when you get this link, when you get the, you're going to get these slides. And when you get them, everything has, you know, if you need to, it's got a video or a reading. I do mostly videos. So you'll have a, a, a link to where you can watch how to make it if you don't catch it here because I feel like I'm going fast. But I did tell you at the very beginning that we're gonna do drag and drops, click and pulls, hotspots, and chat waterfall. Chat waterfall, I didn't do that. So this was something that I had done in the past uh, 2020 uh, when I needed to get the kids involved in answering the chat because they wouldn't talk to you. So how would I fix, if I did this, if you notice, I can't move anything on my slide. Look, I'm clicking and pulling and trying to get, and it won't move, it doesn't. So what we did is you go to slide. You might wanna write it, write this down, but again, it will be in the video that is linked on the slide before this. You'll click on that, that word slide, go all the way down to the bottom where it says edit theme. You will click on edit theme. And all the slides that you are going to see on the side are here, all of them. So I need to fix this. Mm, I feel like I need to make this bigger, make it move down a little bit. Done. Go back to my original slide. The kids cannot move it. So it's not, miss, I lost the slide or miss, I, you know, we, we do have videos that show them how to bring that video, uh, bring that slide back. Or if they clicked on it and they changed words, we have videos for that too. But this is a little bit easier and the kids can't do anything. The only thing they can do is anything that I put on top. Oh, let's go back to where I'm at. Anything I put on top, for instance, I linked this on top. Now, if they decided to move this, they could. Um, I linked this on top. They could move the whole thing. That's why the back button is so important, right? But everything else, the words, they cannot move. They can't delete the slide. I mean, unless they come and delete the whole slide. Again, videos for that to bring them back, but it makes it so much easier. And if you use the same slides year after year and you decide to change things, the edits, edit, the edit theme makes it so much easier to edit, change things. Oh, I want them to write something here. It makes it very, it makes it so much easier. All right, let me get back to this part. Where am I? I got lost. Okay. I feel like I was going really fast because I was scared that I didn't have enough time. So here we go. I'm going to need you guys to talk to me. 
when we do this. This is brisk. Brisk is one of the AI helps, helpers that I like to use because it's things that I know for sure are correct. I know that it's something that I can verify because one of the things that scared me as a teacher was that um, asking ChatGBT or chat GPT would, um, can you do this? Can you help me with that? And it, you have to fix the prompt and fix the prompt and fix the prompt. And it got kind of hard. <laughs> so I'm going to go to another slide. Let's do this. I'm going to click on this. This is the video that I'm giving you. Building so your you online can... business. Let me just turn this down a little Go bit. to Wix.com and set up your store on a single integrated platform. Come on. Add products. So. Hi all, this is Paul from Slice Mania. And today and I'm so, going to show you how to add content on the master so your students don't move or delete anything by me. So she's going to tell you what I told you, but uh, slower this, so and you have time to go back help. and look. But what I want so you to do is I example, want you to go I've to Chrome activity here. Let's just text, but I don't I want don't to. I, don't want I would like you to go to the Chrome web to move store or delete anything. And so you would go I've to added, my this, you would go to find brisk teaching. You would download it. Once you download it, you're going to have it. I, I like to to pin them, whatever I use, I like to pin them. My Grammarly is not working, as you can see, but you can see that's going to be the Brisk logo. So you'll have this little logo right here, which you can see, hopefully, right there, that I have that. So when I went to that video, and I wanted to create, let's say, I could do a presentation. I could do DOK questions, choose the level. I can do a resource. So a lot of the things that you're going to see in the um, the rest of the slides, you're going to see Brisk did all of it except for one. And that's a new one that I'm going to share with you that I just learned about. But everything. now. I have it on sixth grade, but I could move it to 11th grade. I could move it to third grade. And that's the reading level. And this is set to sixth grade because last year I was working a lot with using um, readings and from eighth grade, ninth grade, and having to bring it down for my sixth graders. Could you use this for your EBs? Could you use these for your special ed? Any special pops? You could use it for your GT and bring them the level up. It changes the vocabulary for you. So I'm going to brisk the video, which I already did. And like I said, it opens up its own. I hope you guys can see this. It opens up its own window. And it starts pretty much telling me what the video told me. Now, you see these yellow, right? This is my Grammarly who opens up just when it wants to. But the Grammarly opened up and it's saying, you know, that I could change it. And I could. I could go through this and change it. But other than that, like instead of using right? I don't have it totally open, but it can tell me to change this to that or whatever, but I don't need to change it. Brisket does it for you. Ooh, there's red. Hold on. Oh, see, it's saying to change it to two. But that's not a lot of work. It's real easy. 
I can do it with videos. Um, our eighth grade history is one of the hardest tests in the state of Texas. You can go to the Library of Congress and get the Federalist Papers. I brisked it to eighth grade. I think I have it right here. I changed it to a resource. Uh, you can make it into a reading. You can make it into a presentation. Let's see what the presentation looks like. I'm going to use only 10 slides or I can use more. I can use it with the images or without. This does not have images. It's just reading. I can also, if you go in, which I haven't because I'm, uh, again, I'm working on curriculum for the district. So I've talked to some of my teachers and said, this is what you can do. You can personalize it. Uh, once you give feedback on five students, it even helps do it for you. Let's see what this looks like. I brisk it. I did it for sixth grade. I can always stop generating, but I need to pull up. You could always change the slides in the back because I don't like them. <laughs> but this one actually added pictures for me from study.com. I did it as a resource. And it gave me easier. And this was also level sixth grade. Again, you can change it to any level you want. I can change it to an inquiry. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Let's go back. Let's see what else I can do. I need an exemplar lesson. I need a lesson plan. I need a rubric. It'll help you write a rubric for whatever you need. The inquiry uh, worksheet, this is actually kind of interesting. I'm going to put it in eighth grade. You know what? Let's do it in fifth grade. My husband is a fifth is a fifth grade teacher and he loves social studies. He really does. But he could use the Federalist Papers in the, this inquiry worksheet helps him understand. He's not a social studies teacher, but it can help him understand it bring it down to fifth grade level and they can use it in their 30 minute activities that they have. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't even told you about translating. I can translate it to Spanish. Now, just like anything that we do when we translate, you need to go back and check it. Because sometimes some of the words that we use isn't the ones that are actually used in text. In sixth grade, in fifth grade, they do read, uh, they do, in fifth grade, they still have the dual language classes in Spanish. In science and social studies, sixth and seventh grade. So not necessarily to use the words that we use, to use the correct words, right? So you could change it. The teacher could go back and change it to whatever she wants. You can make it shorter. You can make it longer. The more you use it, let's do, let's do a vocabulary. Where is it? I know there's a vocabulary. Where is it? Where's my vocabulary? The sil syllabus also helps me as a teacher with the DOK questions to stop with a checking for understanding question every 15 minutes. Where's my vocabulary? Oh, I guess because I've already done it. Let me go to another one. Let me go back to this one. Let's do vocabulary. I need to move this because I can't see. I really cannot see where my vocabulary list is. Huh. 
Where is that says vocabulary? I know it has it. Syllabus presentation. Let me do change reading level. Well, let me do a quiz. Let me show you the quiz. Again, I'm doing it in fifth grade, but this time it says Spanish, but I'm going to leave it in English. Create a new doc or a new form. It gives you the opportunity to decide what you want. Google Forms grades for you. But let me go back. Let me change reading level. Changing this whole thing to reading level. And, and, and the more you do it, the, the, the more it learns. It's the same as ChatGBT. The only thing is that I'm not having to, I already know what it is that I'm using, right? This is all my stuff. This is the things that I've, I know that is good, high quality education, because this is coming from the Library of Congress. Now, I just picked history, but you can do this with anything. Now, once it stops generating, because it's doing the long one, sorry. Now, it's not to say that you shouldn't go and read through it. You should. There's my vocabulary list. You see it? It's right here. So after you do that reading, like what I like to do is go to the top of it. And I did this with my science um, curriculum. Oh no, I lost it. Where'd it go? See? And so that's the thing that you have to be careful. I went back to the top and I don't know why all of a sudden. And also when you do this, make sure that you pick a uh, educator because it's free. I should have started with that, right? It's free. This is all free. I can also create science labs, vocabulary lists, quizzes. I, I mean, and the different types of things that you use, the different types of things you, you also have your interventions. Please guys, if you have any questions, stop me and ask. This has been a time saver for me. <laughs> and this is creating stuff for your students to do. Let me give this for the English teachers. Camila Lopez wrote this. Um, it was her daily question for Beowulf. I need to move this over. Okay, I want a brisket. But instead, I want to give feedback. What kind of feedback do I want to do? They have something called a glow and grow. I don't think I did that one. No, I didn't. Um, and right away when I pull it up, I already see that things are misspelled or what have you. But I want to do a glow and grow. I can also do targeted. You can put your own, you can download your own rubric. Um, in middle school, we do have um, the reading department, Miss um, Kim and Miss Laura, they give them rubrics uh, that they kind of get from the state. I'm not sure how they do it in high school or in uh, elementary, but you can take it from uh, the TEA website, get that rubric, download it, and use that for targeted and rubric uh, criteria. You can do next steps, but I love the glow. And I, I have it in fourth grade level, but let's, uh, let's go back to eighth grade. And I brisk it. And so instead of putting it, you don't have to put it on the child's paper. It gives it to you on the side. 
So you decide. You can copy all of it. You can delete something like, oh, I would never say something like this, right? Uh, you did a great job identifying and explaining the three-part uh, structure of Beowulf and how each part aligns with different themes of the epic. Or you could use all three. You could just use one. That's the glow. You have gross to strengthen your assignment. Consider. I love the language. Consider this. As you further explore the structure. Now, I could bring this reading level lower. But I, this is the part. I'm curious about how you might interpret where it gives you, I, I can't see it with this thing. Oh, there we go. Um, I'm curious about how you might interpret the role of other characters in the poem and how they contribute to its themes. Have you considered? What are your thoughts? You know, he talked about earlier about how we need to put writing hand in hand. I'm a science teacher, PE coach first, science teacher. This, if I can look like a, I mean, I think I was doing well. <laughs> Any reading teachers want to say if this is? I hope you guys are there. Anybody there? No? Well, I'm not a reading teacher, but it sounds good. <laughs> right. And my thing is that I can do this with my kids when we have to do. Um, are you a reading? I mean, a science or a social studies teacher? No, or I do math, math, but I okay. love reading and writing. And I incorporate that into my classroom every day. I love it. And so whenever they do a show, and this is not a long essay. It's not a long essay. And I could check for spelling and stuff like that. But I just love that I could give them things to think about, right? And again, I chose a reading and I've been trying to stick to social studies. I had something for math and then I couldn't find it anymore. <laughs> but let me go back to, sorry. Nope. But I, I really feel like this is going to help me, or would have. If I had stayed in the classroom, this would have helped me so much, especially with the science and the social studies having to do the uh, short constructive responses. This helps. It really does. So once again, go to your Chrome, and you will get these. And so what I was going to do was I was going to show you on this video, you know, what I got from where it went. I have no idea. I'll find it later. But when you get this, uh, when you get this uh, slideshow, whoopsie. Sorry, guys. When you get this slideshow, that was me playing with another, another uh, AI. The other thing I like about it is because the, one of the things that I was told, there's only three, three, three businesses, excuse me, excuse me, three things that, um, that are really in charge of the chat GBT, um, Google, somebody else. This is but done by Google, obviously. Because when you do brisk, it opens up in Google. You can even uh, force it into Google Slides, Google Sheets, right? So math people, you could, I mean, I don't know if math people really use the Google Sheets, but you have that. And so when you get this, you will have the uh, inquiry worksheet for how to do the master slides. You'll have that here. You use it to create slides and extension of the lessons, so it's great. Yeah. Um, what I was going to show you was that this is what I did for the the brisk. I looked up what brisk was. It was really long. I don't like to read. Sorry, reading teachers. But it brought it down to a little bit where it was, oh, I can read this. 
I can do this. I have time. I can do this. And then I went ahead and uh, looked up for the formative feedback and how you would do it. I mean, it starts off with install the brisk, obviously. But I do think that this is one of the better. I, I don't I don't have to come up with the prompt. I don't have to. Um, I was looking at one thing and I'm going to show you. I did it with perplexity, but I did the same lesson with um, chat GBT. And it said before that it said create a great lesson of Newton's first law on Google Slides and Drive. I was OK, let's see where they're at. And there was a lot of uh, repetitive like come hither henceforth this way, which means come here. Right. All three of those things mean come here. That's all it means. But. It, when you're reading chat GBT and it's getting better, but when you read some of these, they just say the same thing over and over again, but it's not really telling me what I need. This one, which is the, the bonus one that I just found out, I was playing with it. It wouldn't give me slides. It gave me little pictures that I could use, you know, um, all of them seem correct. <laughs> it did pull stuff from teacher pay teacher, which I would think is a no, no, but but it did say that I could do in slide one, put the objectives like it gave me an outline of what to do and gave me next steps. And this is a uh, perplexity. I might be saying it wrong. I will put that. It's also in the slides I will show you right now, but I got up to 29 slides, though. When I read it, I realized it was a lot of stuff like there were throwaways like, you know. My objective is on the board, so I'm not going to put it up there. Uh, my brief introduction, that's going to be in my reading, right? So, but it did give me some good ideas. Perplexity was showed to me. This is the bonus product um, by one of the, the special ed specialists. And they're using it to help them write their, uh, what are those things called? Not their IEPs, but when they have to make their reports, I guess for their ARDS. But it does help with their IEPs. It helps with differentiating. And so far what I've seen, I put it on here because it looks really good. And everything that I, I did to it, everything that I did to it, it, it has answered or done what I needed again. My this one, you are going to have to come up with prompts. I will again, you will get the slide and I did uh, put the eight minute video. And he does talk about how this this is one of the guys that I like to uh, watch from time to time. He talks about different uh, videos and <clears throat> different AIs, different new apps and stuff. He does like it and he does talk about the the pros and cons and there was way more pros. So I have. Time. For you all to ask me anything to go back. I know that I went through the 2.0 stuff. I mean, this stuff has been around for a while. But is there anything you would like me to go over? I have 10 minutes to go whatever you guys ask. Can you briefly uh, go over and demonstrate the, how to use it with YouTube videos real quick? If you don't mind. Which one? The, 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 the brisk? brisk. Yes. Sure. Uh, give me a subject. Any subject, give me a, a like a content like um, see you see I have this because I had to do it in Spanish too, but I have plate tectonics in Spanish, but uh, but do you have something else? OK, the top part that was Mario Bracamontes. Please don't. He did that, but uh, as you can see, the rest of it's all physics and stuff. Is there anything that you can give me that I can use? Yes, or like sixth grade uh, area problems. Area. Oh, God, is there videos for math? Mariscal, oh, don't yes. yell at me. 
Oh, no, I was going to say, I know, I know, because yes, Mariscal is going to yell at me. <laughs> Mariscal, are you there? I heard you right now. Don't I yell hear at you. me. I know, I know there's videos. I'm kidding. I wish I knew the video that you think would be the best one. Let's say, is he, are these guys good? I don't know math videos. I would go to. Um, no, I would, uh, perfect, because their videos are usually longer. So I would like to see it like in a presentation model. A presentation. How much should good car okay. insurance cost you a month? So as you can see, $8, my brisk, or I'm sure you guys can nope. see this right, over here in the right bottom corner. So there's a right? comparison shopping site that finds you low. You see the little brisk thing here? Let me just pause this. Right, you guys see that it's here, right? Yes, I do. Oh, okay, perfect. So what I, I, I don't, so I've been teaching a while, so I'm kind of old. And like, I know what I know. And whenever I want to know something, I'll get into it and I will know it. But I don't know how I do things sometimes. I don't know how I made it stay there forever. Because sometimes it, uh, somebody was saying, well, mine doesn't stay there. I have to click on it for it to stay. Yours is always there. Can't tell you how I did that. Sorry. But I'm going to push play as it's going. I'm going to open up Risk. You wanted me Hi, to, to do to a presentation? In our last geometry video, we learned that all um, traditional yes, shapes you have said a sixth grade quantity called print, yes, which is basically okay. And um, ten shape. slides, okay, or you this, wanted yes, less? Yes, that's perfect. Learn that these shapes okay, that's nice. also have a two-dimensional now again. You're area. gonna have to go through those ten to slides to help you understand what area is because of the fact that a line that's one centimeter long. Um, sometimes they now, give you an objective, and again, I feel like that's a waste of my kids' time. Because then they this, like, it leaves a trail. Why, why are we Almost reading like this? You know, paintbrush. it's already on the board. By moving the one dimensional line, that and again, we form can you the change the slides? Shape. Of course. And all of the space this or made it in two. that we covered along the way is the area nope, three. of that shape. It's going. Which, as you can see here, is just a square. Okay. But how much? Area I would honestly does this say have? that I would go back well, and I would change it to uh, the master slides to where the kids can't change it. So we could say, and because if you decide, because uh, I know some Just teachers like are still downloading it, making it a picture, what? and then it, and putting it as a background a so that the kids can't area. move it. But there's other but units for if you too. do it and edit slide, you are going to save yourself time as the years go on. And what if we? I mean, I'm sure meter. math changes. The area we'd have gotten, but not would that be much, one right? Square meter. Or now if it's asking me for a vocabulary list a mile, or a quiz, a or to translate, or to create so a resource. Like uh, resource was my big uh, go-to. Let me turn this down because I feel like I'm yelling at you right. guys now. So that gives you a good. Um, I feel like um, resource was my go-to during review. I would put in a selected reading, whatever reading it was. Um, let's say, what was waves? And I had to teach, you know, uh, the different types of the waves, the, you know, the trough, the crest, you know, the amplitude. But I needed to give it to them in reading, just a short little reading. That resource helped me come up with new reading for my kids to have a little short little paragraph to read before they reviewed right before the test uh, at the end of the year. That was a resource. It can create a lesson, a quiz. Here's your vocabulary list. Now, what can I do with this vocabulary list? I can make a drag and drop. I can make a click and pull. I can do a lot. Is it done? Yes. And since I have you here, let me just get out of that. I'm going to show you real quick. Let me make it, um, I don't know, 26. So whenever I do a, I'm looking for snip. A lot of people like the snip and sketch. I don't. Old school, sorry. Go new. Area, copy, paste. Now, when you do this in slides, I don't know which this one it is. Um, 
You can move it wherever you want. Let's make it pretty colors. Let's make it thicker colors. And then I take this. I'm going to take this, whoops, and get that out of the way. I'm going to make this to where it's kind of centered. I'm going to single. I'm going to do, I'm going to do less than single. I'm going to do 0 0.9. I wouldn't go less, I wouldn't go more than 0 0.8. Again, snippet tool, new. And let's say from the vocabulary list that I got, from move this over. I'm just doing this so that you can. Let's do it. I think I did it this color. And so you could do that with all the words. And I want you to see that I can't. I can't take the. I can't change the word. Could I cut it? Yeah, I could cut it. But when the kids click on it, like, oh, what's that? Right. And so I could drag and drop. I could put this in. I could put this in the slide. Put this underneath the slide to where it's not going to move. And then this would be on top where I can move it anywhere. I like, OK, this one's going to be that one. And then, you know, oops, why is it hiding? I think because I'm on top. So you can take that vocabulary list and make a drag and drop. You can do the click and pull like I showed you earlier. Anything else? And again, translation. This has been really good on translation. Anytime I send it just to make sure I sometimes I'll send my stuff to dual language and perfect. That's perfect. And it's like, OK. Because even with Google Translate, sometimes I do have wrong words. <laughs> Anything else, guys? Thank you for that. You are welcome. Anybody else want me to try something or show you something else? Yomi, you have a question on the chat. I can't see the chat. Can you tell me what the question is, Mariscal, please? Yes, I can. Um, mm -hmm. Vanessa R is asking, how do you assess students' comprehension after using the lesson with Brisk? Do you ask questions throughout the lesson? Or yes. Is it interaction uh, interactive with them? Yes. So, um, can I ask Veronica R. What uh, grade level you teach? Did she put it in the chat? No. Her name well, is Vanessa. No, she didn't. Oh, I'm sorry, Veronica. I said Veronica. She said what? I'm sorry. She didn't answer. She she says she's not a teacher yet. Oh, OK. So one of the things that I like to do is check for understanding and I don't let 10 or I don't let 15 minutes go by in a class period without me asking a guided question, an essential question or a DOK question, whatever you want to call it, because it depends on where. You are, uh, but. In the beginning of the of the unit, I do a lot of um, guided questions. Then I use the essential questions that you get from your curriculum people when they do it from the tests that you have for your units. And then I create harder questions at the end. So that's going on in your classroom all the time. And Make sure you use popsicle sticks, a wheel, something, because you're going to find that you're going to always want to ask that kid that you think isn't listening. You have to make it to where they're always asking. Also, Brisk has uh, quizzes. So let me go to this one, which was a eighth grade. We had changed it from the uh, Library of Congress. And we change it to the grade level of eighth, uh, eighth or sixth grade. Not really sure, but I want to create a quiz. Again, that quiz 
Uh, multiple choice questions, 10? Sure. Why is it not? What did I do wrong? Something's wrong. Oh, that's the other thing I had, didn't get to show you. You can choose your standards. <clears throat> so, of course, Texas just got this in. They didn't have theirs. They they just got them in, oh, I want to say, end of April, beginning of May. Um, and I, I, they had uh, reading and math before they had uh, science. And so I can put it into the level that I need, the grade, and I had said uh, eighth grade. And I can select the strand. Not very knowledgeable in their strands. So I'm just going to put social study skills, uh, Texas. These are those strands and I'm just going to push done. I'm not going to click any of them. What's going on? Please enter text. Oh, mm. and this is where I'm going to have to say, because this is history. I can't do this because I don't know. Uh, Federalist one, see what happens because they're like one through whatever. Do I want it um, in this current doc or do I want it a Google form? Let's just see what a Google form looks like. Risk it. Again, remember I changed it to lower reading level and it will give me just for federal list one. What was the main topic? According to Madison. Some history teacher can help me out here. Is this looking good to you? This is something that I think I would probably want to change this question, but can I do that? Yes. Let me go back to this. Nope, not that one. Let me go back to this and let me go to pull the DOK questions again, eighth grade. We're doing Federalist 1 standards. Uh, I have Texas Science Social Studies. I'm going to have to remember to go back and change this. Risk it. And they will give me DOK questions based. I put it, it it's going to show up on the, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to show up on the document that you're on. And so I can take any of those questions and I could change them if I wanted to. But I don't know. I feel like what? That's kind of an, that's a DOK one, but I don't know if this is a good question for history eighth grade. That was just, anybody out there, history? Is Vanessa there, Gar uh, Garza? Does that help um, Vanessa Rodriguez? She said page. yes. Okay, good. You can change it to multiple choice, long response, whatever. Same thing. You you do know when you do, and, and this gets graded for you. You can do immediate. Uh, you can give them the grade immediately later after review. You can lock it down. You can make sure that they uh, uh, they can respond to see the the questions that they missed. They can get the correct answers. There's so much that you can do just on Google Forms to change. Right. I don't know why. Oh, go away. Um, that you can change. I don't like them to be able to retake the test. Some teachers do. And it also depends on what I'm teaching. All right, anything else? Because I need you guys to, whoops. Anything else, seriously. I really don't know what time this ends, guys. No, that was all good. And like I said, I am going to put this in the chat later. And like I said, here you'll have um, the uh, the inquiring work uh, worksheet about brisk. No, about brisk about the the video. This video, it'll be there, and I'll move it right to where it goes. 
but I was supposed to show you with that video, do it, but I, and then, but I still have, I, I was supposed to only do this once, but now they wanted me to do it twice. I don't mind. And guys, um, anything that, uh, click on things. I put videos, uh, helpful, helpful, um, things. Cause this is kind of fast. And if you ever need anything whatsoever, please do not hesitate to contact me. Yomara.garcia at psj.us. I'm at the Office of Curriculum for Middle School. You can always Teams me. If I'm in a meeting, I will get back to you. But please, please, please do the survey. And I know that was a lot. And I had more. <laughs> Any questions? Hmm. No questions from me. Thank you. You are welcome. Anyone else? <laughs> I want to give you time to go get your lunch and then come back and listen to him. Um, I will say that I'm not a chat GBT girl. I'm not. I refuse. It took me forever to figure it out because I hate having to fix my prompts. I hate that. It takes forever. But things that you've already had, Brisk will do it for you. Things that you know are correct. I need you to be careful because sometimes they will give you repetitive words that mean the same thing but doesn't explain it. So you have to check for that. And you need to check that they're giving you correct sources. They're not making up a source. So far, perplexity. The one, the last one that I just showed you has been the best in giving you correct. And if it gives you something that they are taking from a website from Wisconsin, uh, Pearson, Wisconsin, and not Pearson, the company, it tells you. Sometimes people get the chat GBT and it says it's from Pearson and it was Pearson, Wisconsin the city, not Pearson, our testing gurus, whatever, platform. And if you have no questions, go get food and come back and listen to our main guy for a, I don't even know what it's called, but I need to get my lunch so I can watch it. Thank you so much, guys. Iomi, you did great. Huh, thank you, Mariscal. You're amazing. Oh, I can see the chat now. <laughs> Wait, no, I can't. Yes, I can. I'll try to answer any questions that didn't get answered. Aw, you're sweet. Thank you, guys. Bye. Huh, I thought the whole time you could see me. You couldn't. Bye. I thought that was you. Go through the questions. If you're still here and you have anything to ask or ask, I'm here for a while. Cool.